Do you know you can have kidney disease and not even know it? Nine out of ten people who have stage three chronic kidney disease do not know it. The rate of kidney failure for African Americans is three times higher than among Caucasians. And one reason for this is that they are not aware when they have earlier stages of kidney disease. At a time, treatment could prevent the damage from progressing to the point when dialysis or kidney transplantation is necessary. In addition, due to high rates of diabetes, high blood pressure, and heart disease, blacks and African Americans have an increased risk of developing kidney failure. African Americans need to be aware of these risk factors and visit their doctor or clinic regularly to check their blood sugar, blood pressure, urine protein, and kidney function. Be aware. Get tested. The life you save may be your own. For more information, contact urbankidneyalliance.org. this evening this your boy steve belcher urban health outreach media thank you for joining me for a late night education session informed consent for hemodialysis treatment what you need to know but check this out i want to thank everyone and i ask you for your continued prayers on my case today as i shared i had my workman's comp final um, hearing today, two years, three months, 16 days since my accident. And let me tell you something. If you going to file work comp, if something happened to you in the future and you got to do work comp, make sure you do what you got to do. Let me tell you, these guys had, um, information on me having a picture where Ernestine Shepard, the oldest bodybuilder in, in the world, they had that on me. They had me going around uh, the different dialysis DeVitas, I mean, different DeVitas uh, video and taking pictures. I kid you not. They had me, had me going to Houston. I'm like, what? <laughs> it was crazy. But me and my lawyer, we had everything under control, but it just boggled my mind that one did not have nothing to do with the other. So if you happen to file work comp in the future, just make sure you cross your T's and you dot your I's. That's all I'm going to say. All right. I did it. And you know, the ironic thing about this, the workman's comp was next to a DeVita, right on the other side. I, I kid you not, DeVita Beltsville. I was, <laughs> it was crazy, but look, 
the spirit told me, look, we need to talk about informed consent for hemodialysis tonight. That's more important than the presidential debate because what's going to happen with that's going to happen. However, with hemodialysis, if you're on it, whatever happens with the presidential debate, you're still going to be going to dialysis three days a week, regardless. And even people who uh, get diagnosed or become uh, on dialysis, they're going to have to sign, excuse me, they're going to have to do this, informed consent for hemodialysis. Everyone has to sign it. And if you sign one and you really didn't understand it, you just put it away or you just said, I'll come back to it. This is the night you need to be watching and let me break it down to you if you have the time. Because again, this is very important. This is a legal document. Let me put it up close. Every person who starts outpatient dialysis has to sign an informed consent for hemodialysis. There's no and, ifs, or buts about it. You will sign one. You had signed one. It's one in your records. So they basically generalize each place may have one tailored to their facility. Now, this one was from a uh, hospital I used to work at. Hint, hint. <laughs> but um, this was their consent form. And I want to go over this consent as if I was going over it with the new patient just starting outpatient dialysis. And I want to break it down to you as if this was your first time on dialysis. And then I want you to comment and let me know did they explain it to you this way when you started dialysis? And if you do start dialysis, this is the way they should break it down to you so you can come away understanding what your hemodialysis treatment is about. So here we go. Number one, it says, I understand from my doctor, let's say it's Dr. Smith. Okay, so I'm, let me start over. I understand. And let me tell you, start, I mean, share this video. Please share this video because other warriors need to see this. I want to tell you something, and I don't mean to be boasting or anything like this, but you're not going to get no, if you want dialysis right now, or you're getting ready to start, you have a family member, you're not going to get nowhere else if somebody's going over the consent form for hemodialysis. This is a standard form. This is no different from you go to uh, California, Nevada, Connecticut, down Texas, Florida, no different. So share this broadcast because other people need to see this. It's just a shame that six people are on here and more than 700,000 people are on dialysis and get diagnosed each year. So this is very important information that you're not going to get nowhere else. So let me begin. I understand from my doctor, Dr. Smith, that I suffer from kidney disease with kidney failure, a serious condition in which my kidneys do not function as they should in removing impurities or waste and fluid from my blood. Number two, the procedure necessary to treat my condition has been explained to me. And I understand the general nature of the procedure to be as follow. Now, how many people had the procedure explained? I know a lot of people who haven't. Here we go. Hemodialysis. 
artificial kidney treatment involves the pumping of my blood outside my body through bloodlines into a purification device called a dialyzer, which contains a blood cleaning solution called dialysate and which act together to remove certain impurities and excess fluid from my blood. If you were on dialysis, was that how I explained to you? Number three, I understand that during hemodialysis, blood will be pumped to and from my body at a rate of roughly one pint per minute. Okay, was that told? Number four, I understand that a long-term program of maintenance hemodialysis will not cure my kidneys disease. Hemodialysis, whether done in a clinic or at home, is offered as a substitute to replace some of the functions that my kidneys are no, no longer able to perform. <clears throat> Excuse me. I understand that there are alternatives. If you didn't know that, I'm telling you now. There are alternatives to this treatment, including one, Hemodialysis performed at home. Two, peritoneal options. I'm sorry. Two, peritoneal dialysis, continuous ambulatory and continuous cycling. Three, transplantation. And four, refusal of treatment. Correct. You have the right to refuse treatment if you wish. And that each of these options involves certain risks, benefits, consequences, and as I had this, I'm sorry, involves certain risks, benefits, and consequences as I have discussed with my doctor. Number five, I understand that there are risks to my health associated with the hemodialysis treatment described below. Now, look, let me, re let me reread this. And you need to share this. And if you know people on dialysis that's not on here now, they need to be here again. Number five says, I understand that there are risks. That's where the S, risks to my health, to your health with the hemodialysis treatment described below. And I'm about to describe those risks because it's a lot of them. Go share this. I'll be right back to describe the risk that you have involved with hemodialysis. I'll be right back. people may wonder like Steve why you play that video with the jet with your organization on there because I'm speaking into existence that's what I plan to do travel across this globe 
spreading education and helping people who can't help themselves with this disease. So let me tell you about the risks associated with the hemodialysis treatment. Number one, blood pressure or low blood pressure can be caused by excess fluid removal during dialysis. Medication naturally causes unrelated to dialysis. The effects of low blood pressure can be unsteadiness or imbalance, lightheadedness, headache, confusion, impairment of ability to walk or drive, severe fatigue, loss of consciousness, seizures, blurred vision, irregular heartbeats, cardiopulmonary arrest, and death. How many warriors experience low blood pressure on dialysis one minute you're, you're you're on nothing's going on the next minute people are standing over you rubbing your chest waking you up and you doing like this what happened what happened what happened you experienced low blood pressure because maybe too much fluid was pulled off or you took your anti-hypertension medicine before coming to dialysis. And you need to talk to your doctor if you take hypertension medicine before coming to dialysis and you experience those symptoms. Let's move on. High blood pressure. Doing dialysis can be caused by excessive Okay, let me, re, let me restart this. High blood pressure during dialysis can be caused by excessive amounts of fluid intake. Weight above established dry weight or target weight, overreaction of my blood vessels in response to removal of fluid during dialysis or natural situations unrelated to dialysis. The effects of high blood pressure can be headaches, blurred vision, stroke, cardiopulmonary arrest, and death. Significant blood loss can be caused by bleeding from internal lesions, open cuts, or punctures, which may be aggravated by the use of heparin, a drug given during dialysis, which can reduce normal blood clotting, dislodge needles, needles coming out of the fistula or graft, blood system disconnection, dialyzer leaks, and clotted dialyzers. The effects of significant blood loss can be low blood pressure, anemia, seizures, loss of consciousness, cardiopulmonary arrest, and death. Air embolism. Air embolism is the in inadvertent entry of air into the bloodstream. It can be caused when air enters the bloodstream, dialyzer, catheter, or other access or connection points while the blood pump is operating. The effects of an air embolism can be cardiopulmonary arrest, and death. Now, this can happen. You ask kidney warrior Darnell Carley. He experienced the air embolism. And thank God he lived to tell about it. Hemolysis. Hemolysis is the rupture of red blood cells. 
It can be caused by blood turbulence at high blood flow rates due to a poorly performing fistula, catheter, or graft. Or, check this out, a kink in a bloodline. So if you are in dialysis and you don't know your bloodline is kink, it can cause hemolysis. A difference between the chemical composition of dialysate, the blood cleaning in the solution, and blood. The effects of hemolysis can be chest pains, back pains, abdominal pains, generally ill, feeling anemia, pancreatitis, excessive potassium in the blood leading to cardiopulmonary arrest and death. Now, do you see the common theme here in all of these uh, risks associated with hemodialysis? Death. That's why you need to be mindful of your treatment, okay? Let's talk about fistula and graft infiltration. How many warriors had infiltrations during dialysis? I see it all the time. All the time. Infiltration. Well, that's one of the risks associated with hemodialysis. Graft fistula infiltrations is an accumulation of blood in the tissue surrounding the fistula or graft and can be caused by displacing the needle within the fistula or graft. Let me see. I'm sorry, I don't have a needle, but normally I have a needle, right? But what happens, the technician or nurse goes through your access, maybe because they're not paying attention, maybe because they just couldn't get it, maybe they just, I don't care, bam, whatever. And they went through your access and they caused this infiltration. That can happen. And so what it is, again, it's an accumulation of blood in the tissue surrounding the fistula or graft and can be caused by the displacing the needle within the fistula or graft, leaking the blood between the skin and fistula or graft or the needle puncturing all the way through the fistula or graft. Even if you're on dialysis, you may can move your arm a certain way and they can go through the access. The effects of infiltration can be painful. Swelling, infection, loss of the fistula can happen, or graft, lack of blood flow to a limb, loss of the limb, and death. That's from Graft fistula infiltration. Death? Loss of a limb? Do you guys know that? How many warriors have more than one fistula or graft? That's why we're here doing these educations. I don't want to see you going through that. We just need the warriors here so we can save them. We're happy to save four people. But I know there's thousands of people with accesses. Thousands. Now let's talk about infection. And I want to show you one way. The catheter. No one's going to show you these educational pieces. Even though you got this in your neck, 
if you watching this show and you have this in your neck, by me having this device right now and talking about it, that should tell you that I have information that can help you avoid infection. No other place is going to show you this and sit down and illustrate and talk to you about this, keeping you safe. So let's talk about infections. Infections can be caused by many organisms and many sites. Patients with kidney failures, I'm sorry, patients with kidney failure have reduced abilities to fight off infection, decreased immunity, and some are more prone to infections. Infection of the bloodstream, also known as septicemia, generally via fistula, catheter, or graft, can occur with dialysis. Patients with diabetes are particular prone, I'm sorry, are particularly prone to this complication. So if you got type 2 diabetes, you got a catheter, a fistula, or a graft, and you're on hemodialysis, you're at serious risk for infection or septicemia. Infections can be caused by bacteria or viruses, coronavirus, flu virus. Some viruses can be transmitted through exposure to contaminated blood, including hepatitis or HIV. Yes, the effects of infection can be fever, confusion, aching, infections in other parts of the body, cardio, cardiopulmonary arrest, other organ failure, and death. And let me tell you, if you're on hemodialysis, you are at risk for HIV and hepatitis B. And so that I'm going on the back side of the uh, informed consent for hemodialysis. Also, you at risk, chemical imbalances and metabolic disorder. As you can see, it's a lot that patients on hemodialysis outpatient the risk associated with hemodialysis. Well, the risk to your health, all right, to your health associated with hemodialysis treatment. Now I'm on the second page. Chemical imbalances and metabolic disorders can be caused by incorrect dialysate mixture. So they're saying that they could incorrectly mix the dialysate <laughs> or composition, rapid removal of toxins during dialysis, and alteration in blood sugar during dialysis, primarily in diabetic patients. The effects of chemical imbalances and metabolic disorders can be confusion, dementia, or disorientation, headaches, imbalances, impairment, or ability to walk or drive, loss of consciousness, seizures, irregular heartbeat, and death. You see the common thread here? And I don't know if you've been told this when you was on when you just started dialysis, everything that I'm reading to you, 
Maybe they said it and your mind was somewhere else, but this is real. And if you didn't know this, or if it wasn't shared to you when you started dialysis, uh, shame on them. I'm just looking at my watch party. It's only one person, maybe me, but this is important information, guys. And I want to periodically come through and talk about it, but there's always a rebroadcast, so you can always share this. But you're not going to get no information like this nowhere else. So if your mom, dad on dialysis, and you notice certain changes after dialysis, this is all associated with it, what I'm going over right now. Even you, if you're on dialysis and you don't feel well, after dialysis, it's the chemical imbalance in the metabolic disorder. All right, let's talk about decreased blood flow to the limbs can occur following a fistula or graft placement or from other natural causes such as diabetes. So they're telling you when you get the access placement, decreased blood flow to your limbs can occur. How many people say, oh, my hands are numb when I'm on dialysis, or I just got this graft or access surgery done, and I can't feel my fingertips during dialysis. It's cold. I got to put a glove on. That's from the surgery. But, and it tells you that. So when you have the catheter in, even before you have the access, the fistula or graft, and you have this catheter in, when they're reading this to you, when you come in for outpatient dialysis, they're telling you, or they may have told you, you may not have heard it. They're telling you that there's going to be decreased blood flow to your limbs. They say can occur following a fistula or graft placement or from other natural causes such as diabetes. This is not related to infiltration. The effects of decreased blood flow to a limb can be tingling, pain, cooling of the fingers or toes, discus discoloration of the skin, blue or black, gangrene of the limb. You can lose your limb behind this shit, right? amputation, and death. Do they tell you this? Did they tell you this? These effects can appear within days or at some delayed period after the fistula or graft have been placed. Guys, I'm telling you, do they tell you this? That's why I'm so passionate. That's why my voice is raised. Because I know, even if someone doesn't comment and says this happened to them, I've known patients throughout my 33 years experience that this has happened to because they didn't know. They lost their limb. Multiple access malfunction or failure. Fingers cut off. Hands. All kind of bull crap because they didn't know and they had a, 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 a excuse my lack of a term, a shitty surgeon that didn't care. So you need to know these things. If you haven't started dialysis 
and you're going down that road or you know somebody, let them know about the consent form, guys. This is no joke. Dialysis, it ain't for the uh, faint hearted. When people say that, when they talk about warriors, you damn skippy. Because look at all the things that their, their health is at risk for. And I haven't even finished. Allergic reaction can be caused by exposure to foreign substances. For example, the dialysis membrane in the dialysis in the dialyzer transfusion or medication what if you gotta go get a blood transfusion because your hematocrit is low i know warriors who had to go get it they don't want to get it because they fear it's going to interfere with their transplant uh uh their transplant uh what's the word i want to use um god man my uh you, you know what i'm trying to say but warriors don't want to if they're on the transplant list they don't want to mess it up and getting transfusion because of the antibodies they don't want to mess that up those chances up so um Allergic reaction can be caused by exposure to foreign substances. For example, the dialysis membrane in the dialyzer, transfusion, or medications. What about when we administer uh, iron or other medicine and patients say they itch or can get a reaction to uh, the uh, uh, antibiotics? You may have a reaction to vancomycin maybe the nurse may run it in too fast and you start itching and getting hives I and mean, we got to give you benadryl or other iv medicine that may be administered to you during dialysis so the effects of allergic reaction can be itching low blood pressure back pain chest pain difficulty breathing cardiopulmonary arrest and death Again, do you see the common theme? Death, 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 death. And I don't mean to say that um, and, 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 and try to um, cast a, a, a dark cloud on outpatient hemodialysis, but what I'm trying to do is have you be really mindful of what's going on and go back and read your consent form so you know and you can be armed to know what goes on during your treatment while you sitting there uh, expecting these caregivers to know uh, to to watch you during this life saving uh, treatment. Also, uh, allergic reaction. I haven't even talked about pyrogenic reaction. You may, Steve, these big words. Come on now. Pyrogenic reaction? Yes, pyrogenic reactions. If you're a kidney warrior, I don't know if you heard of that if you're on outpatient dialysis, but this is something that's ha that happens. It's, it, it's so important that it happens. They put it in the consent form to let you know that it can happen pyrogenic reaction that's where the s reactions are caused by blood contamination from dead bacteria products in the bloodstream you may say what i thought this was a closed device, a closed system. You got the lines, you got the dialyzers, my blood running through the tubing. Let me read that again. Pyrogenic reactions with an S are caused by contamination 
from dead bacteria products in the bloodstream. Now you say, how does that happen? Unlike intact live bacteria, these small dead bacteria components may pass across the dialysis membrane, guys. Yes, in the dialyzer and into the bloodstream. The effects of a pyrogenic reactions can be fever, aches, pains, and infection-like symptoms. Now, let me give you an example of a real pyrogenic reaction that happened in real life. Kimberly Saints or Scions, the LPN in Lufkin, Texas, 2007-2008, injected bleach into several patients' lines and murdered kidney warriors, our brothers and sisters, on the machine that couldn't defend for themselves got introduced with chlorine bleach. Went, to, went into cardiac arrest. That's why I say you got to be mindful what's going on. They had a pyrogenic reaction. A lot of them ended up with anemia, anemia, uh, Symptoms and conditions that had to be rushed to the hospital, and several died. Yes, this is real life. This ain't no lifetime uh, situation here. Hyperkalemia, which is high potassium is an excess of potassium in the body. It can be caused by dietary indiscretions like eating too much potassium containing foods. Some medications, some herbal remedies, and hemolysis. The effects of hyperkalemia can be profound weakness Irregular heartbeats. And you know the other two guys. Cardiopulmonary arrest and death. Hypokalemia is a deficiency of potassium which can, can be caused by use of low potassium in the dialysate. And that's what you got to watch out for. When the doctor change your bath to a low potassium and they may change it back and the technician or the nurse may not recognize that and change your bath back, it could be deadly consequences. Deadly. So, hypokalemia is a deficiency of low I'm sorry, a deficiency of back potassium, which can be caused by use of low potassium in the dialysate and also by vomiting or diarrhea without eating the correct amount of potassium containing foods. So if you got diarrhea, you can have low potassium. Low potassium dialysate may be, a, now check this out. Low potassium dialysate may be administered in response to previously high blood levels of potassium and it didn't change the bad back when it got corrected. The effects of hypokalemia can be weakness, dizziness, irregular heartbeats, 
cardiopulmonary arrest and death. Here we go. The last one. Loss of amino acids and protein. Dialysis may cause the loss of amino acids through the dialyzer membranes, which can lead to the loss of protein in the bloodstream. That's why we ask warriors to eat more protein because you lose it across the membrane. The effects of the loss of amino acids and protein can be low serum albumin, malnutrition, and increased risk of mortality. Then it goes on to say, I will immediately notify my doctor of any adverse reaction or problems I may have with regards to these treatments. So if you got issues, you need to tell your doctor. I mean, don't wait around for the tech or the nurse. You tell your doctor, if you experience anything that I read on both of these sides of this consent form, you let them know this is your life. Then it goes on to say, on the consent form, I will read to you. If you can't read it, I will read to you. It says, I have read and understand the information in this consent. Right? I have read and understand the information in this consent. I have asked any and all questions I have about these treatments and the information in this consent. If I have any further questions, I will ask them. And then you say, then I say, excuse me, it goes on to say, I consent to the administration of hemodialysis treatments by the staff of blank hemodialysis outpatient dialysis treatment center. And then it says, this authorization is valid for a period not to exceed 12 months from the date of my signature. Then it goes on where y'all see the signature. You sign it, get the witness. So that's it. I mean, again, all I got to say is if you signed the consent form, you had to sign one. It's, it's no, I don't know if I signed it or I don't, I don't believe so. You, if you running on the machine right now, not right, literally right now, but if you're on outpatient hemodialysis, peritoneal, you're doing some form of kidney dialysis treatment, you signed a consent form. It's no ifs and buts about it. And what this show is about is do you understand what you signed? That's all. And if you don't don't understand, I read to you. I tried to break it down. Um, if you got any more questions, feel free to hit me up through Messenger. But if you haven't started dialysis, you will be signing the consent form. And the more you know, the better you'll be armed and prepared. Because let me say this. A lot of clinics now, they rush through this. Or the the secretary, administrative secretary, they just push it through. They want you to sign, especially if you four hours treatment. They they kind of say, hey, can you sign this? And they ask, tell you to read it, you know, read it home. Like they say, oh, we can make a copy for you and you can read it at home. I know because I used to do it because I want to hurry up and get the person on dialysis. It's, it's 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock. I want to get off around 8, 8.30 and patients four hours. Hey, I, I'm guilty of that. So that's how I know 
that this practice is done where they rush you through to sign this form, especially coming late in the evening. And if you're three and a half hours, three hours and 45 minutes or four hours, you better damn bet. And if you're on the last shift and you come a little late, they're going to rush this process through and you're not going to understand it. You just, And you may not even feel good. You may just want to get on dialysis to uh, get get this crap out the way. So you'll rush through it, sign it. They'll make a copy before you give it to you. You put it in your bag, put it in a manila envelope or something. You take it home and put it with the rest of the papers. Hell, you may even throw it away. And who knows? But it's very important. I mean, that's, that's, uh, that is what what I want to what I want to say. That is uh, health health smart one hundred and one is knowing what you sign right. You're going to if you're not on dialysis, if your parents haven't started yet, and they're headed that way, or if you're headed that way. You're going to be uh, filling out one of these or signing one of these. It's informed consent for hemodialysis. Everyone signs it. Uh, and it goes down and tells you what, if you understand, it, it starts out, number one, that you understand from your doctor what's about to take place. And here go all the things that can happen. I wasn't just pulling out of my hat. These are all the things that can happen. High blood pressure. Blood loss. Air embolism. Hemolysis. Graft. Fistula infiltration. And infection. And then you go on number two. You got the chemical imbalance. Decreased blood flow rate, allergic reaction, pyrogenic, hyperkalemia. You see that? If you don't remember signing this, right? You see, patient signature. The physician has to sign this. This is an order. They're not going to dialyze you unless you sign this paper. You see that? There go the patient, the physician, and the witness, which would be me or the charged nurse. So if you don't remember signing one of them, you could have been just out of it or just didn't remember or something. But if you still had that paper together with other papers, I would go back and look at it if you don't remember it just to see what yours say. And if you can't locate it, don't got it, always go to your facility and tell them you want a copy of your uh, consent form. You had that right. Let me read the comments and then I'm gonna call it a night. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, let me see, Cedric said, I need that information. God bless you, brother, for watching. Hey, Sabrina, God bless you. God bless you, baby girl, thank you for watching. Should I get my fist removed? Um, that's a personal choice. I don't want to, let me just say this. A lot of, a lot of people, Sabrina, keep it just in case. I don't want to speak that in, into existence. We want to keep that kidney as long as you can. But if, if it's not bothering you, I wouldn't mess with it. You know, any type of infection or something like that, yeah. But you just never know. But talk, I will tell you this. Talk with your surgeon to see 
if you can get it closed up and if you get it closed if let's not hope this happens so if by chance that acts uh the grad fails and you you know god forbid have to go on dialysis again that you are uh had that access all right hey jeff thanks for watching hey sabrina thanks again for uh watching and commenting uh thank you miss kathy i appreciate you i haven't seen you around i hope all is well um god bless you thanks jed yeah i'm trying to speak the truth yeah you're right sabrina it's, it's death and, and that's why i just want people to understand um you know a lot of people don't under realize that uh you know that you're gonna have to sign this before you get on the machine and and they give you all the information there and i just want you to be armed and prepared even if you're on dialysis and you don't remember it go back and look for it and just read through it and if it's something you don't understand reach out to me uh hit me on message at words you don't understand you know like for instance if you get to uh like say chemical imbalance and metabolic disorder something like that i mean chemical imbalance and medical metabolic is just another fancy medical words of uh toxins uh imbalance uh uh electrolytes out of whack nothing is uh what they call hemostasis like a steady you know balance steady state so when you got uh chemical imbalances say uh your potassium is supposed to be between say three five to five or whatever if it's below three or above five or whatever it's out of balance it's not in that steady state so that's basically what it's talking about uh so again I encourage you to look for your informed. That's what it's called. I'm showing you informed consent for hemodialysis. You got to have it with your paperwork. If you don't, I encourage you to go back to your um, dialysis clinic and ask them for a copy of it. But that being said, guys, I thank you for watching. I'm out again. Keep your boy in prayer. We still, we you know the verdict is is uh, out. Uh, just gotta wait for the commissioner to send me what her ruling is, and that's basically for permanent part. Wait a minute, partial permanent work comp. Wait a minute, damn, <laughs> permanent partial disability from work compensation. So uh it was just crazy just how the, the guy had uh me they had a picture of me with ernestine shepherd i mean they didn't put it up on the board or anything like that but the lawyer had a thick piece of paper and was questioned like say like so you're the uh uh founder of urban kidney alliance and da da this and you do podcasts and you did shows on this day and this day and this thing Man, I was like, sir, get to the point. And I, it just irked my nerve. But, um, you know, let me just tell you, if you ever get mixed up in a work comp case with your employee, just make sure you stick with your guns and fight for what's right for you. I damn sure did. And I'll do it again if it ever uh, happens again. So. With that being said, good night, guys. Thank you for watching. And look, get tested for kidney disease. Your life depends on it because there's clinics out there right now. And that's another thing they was talking about me going around to the DeVitas and filming. And I didn't, you know, I didn't, I was shocked because he came up with that information. But I want, I should have said, you know, hindsight when I look back, I said, you're damn right because I'm trying to prevent people from going on dialysis. You work, you know, your clients are are evil. 
they're, that's how I consider them, they're evil corporation that look at profits over patience, not patience over profit. So with that being said, get checked for kidney disease because the life you say may be your own. Thank you guys. God bless you. And we'll see you around. Peace. Do you know you can have kidney disease and not even know it? Nine out of 10 people who have stage three chronic kidney disease do not know it. The rate of kidney failure for African Americans is three times higher than among Caucasians. And one reason for this is that they are not aware when they have earlier stages of kidney disease. At a time, treatment could prevent the damage from progressing to the point when dialysis or kidney transplantation is necessary. In addition, due to high rates of diabetes, high blood pressure, and heart disease, Blacks and African Americans have an increased risk of developing kidney failure. African Americans need to be aware of these risk factors and visit their doctor or clinic regularly to check their blood sugar, blood pressure, urine protein, and kidney function. Be aware. Get tested. The life you save may be your own. For more information, contact Urban Kidney Alliance org. Uh-huh.